When I was about 10 years old, my dad introduced me to one of the most important car movies and movie cars ever. The white Dodge Challenger from Vanishing Point. And so naturally, I'm very excited about this car. Today, I am Kowalski. Point challengers from the original movie from the 1970s movie didn't survive. As far as anybody knows, there's no record of one. Whoa, that's some stiff breaking. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, what was I saying? The cars from the first film, there's a lot of controversy on what happened to them. There were five cars used to make the film. Uh, four of them were 444 speeds and one was a 383 automatic. Uh, we have a reliable source that was at a salvage auction in Los Angeles in 1971. Those five cars were sold for scrap, every single one of them. If one did survive, nobody knows where it is. There's no way to trace it. There's no way to prove that it still exists. So the only way that you'll ever experience a screen used Dodge Challenger from the legendary vanishing point is to go to the 1996 TV remake and that's exactly what this car is. Well, the second movie was made for TV. It wasn't a big screen uh, film, whereas the first one was intended to be. It was a B-grade movie. But... It's the maximum trip at maximum speed. It's developed a cult following uh, that still exists. And it's quite strong. Uh, the second movie is uh, being made for TV. It's not quite uh, up to speed, you might say, with the original one, but um, it's uh, it's still got the same basic storyline. It's got the same car. The guy's got the same name. It's in the desert. That's where the similarities end. A lot of guys say, oh, I don't like the second movie because it's not like the first. It wasn't meant to be like the first. They wanted something that would relate to the current situation. And it's not just some hammer and soundtrack, you know, with some guy blasting through the desert. When I watched Death Proof and those girls freaked out about finding a Vanishing Point Challenger. Vanishing Point, mate, that's a fucking classic. I know exactly what that is. If you see a Vanishing Point Challenger and there's some way that you can get in the driver's seat, you do it. This shit is off the fucking hook. They destroyed it. But I understand exactly what those characters were going through. You see one, you gotta drive it. Well, the movie was all about the car. Not that the actors weren't, weren't important. They're, they're a great thing and, you know, you send them a Christmas card. The second movie, they used uh, five cars as they did in the first. Uh, these cars came from the film when they finished filming it. So uh, we picked them up and restored one of them and the rest of them, we just left them dirty like they came. Uh, number three, uh, the one behind me was uh, a backup stunt car that was used in the tunnel jump scene and it still has all the uh, off the lot dirt on it and whatnot. We haven't ever done anything to it at all. Hadn't heard it run in 20 years. Well, the road grime was basically uh, a combination of uh, potting soil and coffee that was sprayed on the car and then they'd spray it with hairspray to keep it in place. And then we couldn't hardly get that crap off of them either. We had to scrub it off with a Scotch-Brite pad. So in the first movie, they towed a Camaro and sent a Camaro into those bulldozers at the end. But in this remake in 1996, they actually used the Challenger, filled it with gas, a little bit of dynamite, 
sent it into those bulldozers and blew that shit up. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty cool. I'm sure it's a remake, it's 1996 and it's for TV, but the fact that they actually did the stunt, I know it hurts, they blew up a Challenger, but they actually did the stunt. I can respect that, I think that's pretty cool. The nice car, the restored car, is Unit 1. It was the main hero car that Vigo Mortensen drove. This one was used mostly for close-ups and uh, uh, interior driving shots uh, where you were driving down the road, uh, beauty shots at the beginning of the film and stuff like that. But as the movie progressed, all the cars matched in that they had the same dirt sprayed on them and stuff like that. So. Uh, when you start running film, if a car breaks, you can't stop. You can't have people standing around, so you bring another car in, you keep going. And Ted actually worked on the cars for the movie. We, we were contacted uh, for parts. Uh, I run uh, Stevens Performance in Anderson, Alabama. We cater to uh, parts sales for 62 to 74 Dodge Chrysler Plymouth vehicles. And uh, they had to have all this stuff, you know, wheels and all this stuff so it was nice to be involved with it it was, it was a lot of fun a lot of late nights so the reason why ted was able to retain all five cars from this movie was because these cars are actually owned by production whereas when you look at the first movie they were loaned to the movie nobody really cared about keeping movie cars up until about maybe three or four years ago now they're important back then just like bullet all those cars disappeared oh yeah well, actually when the opportunity came up i said you know we they're going to sell these things. I got to have them. If memory serves, it was one bid for all of them. So you, you got the cars and whatever pieces of them were left. And we'd seen them in the in the film and stuff like we saw the pre-production deal and all that. And it was, uh, but it was exciting to actually see the cars because I bought them without seeing them. After production was wrapped, he took this car and he gave it a full restoration, top to bottom. This car is perfect. Well, owning my own parts business helped uh, a lot with uh, restoration on the cars because we had either had the parts or had access to them. And uh, we had a build team that, that uh, put the car together. The body and paint work was done by uh, Mark Coates at ABM Restoration. Uh, the build team was uh, Benny and Sammy Wyndham from Classic Car Care, myself and uh, Stephen Nash, uh, one of my employees at uh, Stephen's Performance. The interior was toast, like I said, it was uh, when you build movie cars, uh, you're building movie cars. Uh, you know, the camera cheats a lot. There's a lot of things you can't see. So you can use dash caps instead of dash pads, and you can use seat covers that somebody's sitting on where you can't see them and get away with it. This car wasn't too bad because they didn't beat it up. I think the only body panel we replaced was the hood. Everything else went back on it. This was the hero car, so they were kind of careful with it. We used as much of the car as we could because we wanted to keep as much of it as we could. Uh, most of the mechanical components and stuff like that, a lot of that stuff was changed for some reason. We wanted to change the engine type or change the rear end type, stuff like that. You've seen all the Dodges that I've driven in this series don't have Hemis. Ted found it appropriate that this car needs a Hemi in order to really live up to the name. So now, this thing has Emmy. as it would have come from the factory with the Hemi in it, all the frame brackets were put in, the Dana 60 rear end, the, the whole nine yards. So it looks uh, just like if it rolled off the assembly line as a Hemi Challenger. It drives like a 1970 Challenger. It's a 425, 450 horsepower engine with a manual transmission and a 410 rear end and belted tires, it's out of control. If you want to have fun with this thing, it needs to be somewhere where it's safe, like uh, an airport runway or a drag strip.
Ted is the right guy to have these cars. I mean, he's got a massive collection of props, items from the movies. He is a connoisseur when it comes to Vanishing Point. I may love the movie, but Ted lives the movie. He's got everything. Well, I, I don't have a favorite, I like them both. But uh, the, the first one is still something I'll sit down and watch every once in a while. Uh, my wife makes fun of me because I can rehearse all the lines, but if you watch something long enough, you can do that. And there weren't a lot of lines in that movie. And if you want to see it in person, all you got to do is come down to Sevierville in Tennessee, go to the Muscle Car Museum, and there it is. Really close, you may not be able to touch it, but it is there and sitting for you, ready to, uh, to come and take a look. And it is a real Vanishing Point Challenger. Not only that, it's the best Challenger that I've ever seen. People come in and they, get, it's, it's, they enjoy looking at a car that was used in a film. A lot of people don't get to see that, and uh, this gives them that opportunity. This is a movie star, a real-time, old, iconic, game-changing movie star. And there goes the challenge of being chased by the blue, blue meanies on wheels. The vicious traffic squad cars are after our known driver, the fast American hero, the, the electric centaur, the demigod, the super driver of the Golden West. Two nasty Nazi cars are close behind the beautiful known driver. The police numbers are getting closer, closer, closer to our soul hero in his soul mobile. Yeah, baby, they're about to strike. They're going to get him, smash him, rip. The last beautiful free soul on this planet. The movie cars are something that people enjoy over and over because they watch the films. The car guys watch these movies all the time. We're car people. This is what we do. Well, we've seen a, probably more involvement with uh, Chrysler and or Dodge and Plymouth in the movies and television shows simply because they like the way they look. You know, they made a lot of Mustangs and Camaros and, and they sold more of those, but you know, you see a lot of, of television shows and movies, they use Chrysler products in them. In 2008, uh, we were really thrilled when they came out with the new Challenger. Uh, it's got all the styling cues of the original car but it's modern. You can, you can drive it to work every day, unlike one of these original cars. When Dodge made the brand new Challenger, they were giving it to us. They were giving it to the guys who wanted to live their fantasies from the movies. And they gave us that opportunity to be Kowalski. And all you gotta do is go spend about $25,000, $26,000, and you can be Kowalski. You know, we started being interested in these cars in the 60s. I've always thought that Chrysler's styling cues were cutting edge. I haven't seen it done that well since that car. Hey everyone, here's a rolling shot of the Dodge Challenger from Vanishing Point rolling down the highway while I talk to you about the channel, money, and the extreme thanks for everyone sticking by me to get me to 40,000 subscribers. It's absolutely amazing. I never thought I would get here. And without you guys, I never would have gotten here. And I hope you enjoyed what was the only existing Vanishing Point Challenger. Make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. Get it out there to your friends. I have noticed that people are commenting about the irregularity of posts on the aficionado. So YouTube doesn't pay what it used to pay and so now you still have to maintain a regular full-time job outside of YouTube in order to support it. And that's the reason why the aficionado is not a full-time gig for me. It takes me about two weeks to edit one of these episodes and it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. These are eight hour days or nine hour days every single day for two weeks makes an aficionado episode. So I have to maintain a job outside of it. What I've done is I've set up a new Patreon account and in this Patreon, you can help me out by donating or subscribing financially and uh, you'll be 
helping the aficionado out and me out to hopefully make this into a full-time gig instead of just a part-time project. So with my Patreon account, with every subscriber, for now, I'll be offering full-resolution digital prints of the photography that I take on set of these beautiful cars. And these are great uh, decorative items that you can hang up in your house if you really love cars and really love the aficionado. So, again, check out my new Patreon. Help me out together. Hopefully, we can make the aficionado a full-time priority. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you hit that subscribe button if you're brand new because uh, there's a lot more coming. And to my faithful subscribers, thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you for the 40,000 subscribers. It's been quite a ride.